it's a, a, a brilliant thing to hear the play read out because up until now, the only version I've heard is the one that I speak out loud in my own flat when I'm in my kitchen or in the bath or in my front room. And so the version the actors read out, because they're really terrific actors, is much better than the version in my head and it's different from it. And it's a moment when the play very tangibly becomes not yours. There is a moment where the actors start working on the text and bringing it to life and there is a moment where everyone suddenly goes, oh, this is what we're doing, this is what, it, this is what it's going to be. And they start pitching them with their own things and building it themselves. And when you've got a really good text and when you have a really good company, that moment where it catches fire is incredibly exciting. Hearing it read out, you hear things where you think um, that's brilliant, the actors that really well and it works. You hear bits where you think, well, maybe the actors could do it differently and it might work. And you hear bits where you think the actors have done that really well and it still doesn't work. It was an argument that flared up out of absolutely nothing. And um, Ogham and Piotr, who's the brother, both completely lost it. You've never seen it like that before, and it came from absolutely nowhere. And this is the kind of thing that happens all the time in real life. And it was just lovely to see it suddenly bursting out of nowhere in the reading. And of course, you, can, you don't really get that from reading it on the text. As soon as you get actors reading out a play, the play becomes less about the words on the page and more about the dynamics between the characters. So it's just brilliant to be able to not look at the page and watch what actors are doing and see what they're responding to. And you get the sense of the room, the sense of people being engaged or not. Hearing it spoken out loud, it makes it clear how vivid it is, how lively, how funny, how detailed. What you hear is that there's bits of the play that are really mournful and really moving. Because there's a, there's a part for me anyway of working on a play where it starts becoming slightly technical. You're trying to make things work and you're also trying to work out if... Um, you, you're, you're just looking at it as a kind of exercise of machinery almost to kind of see what what fits together. Is are you, are you moving the action on? And it's possible to lose a little bit of a sense of these are these are kind of, sort of breathing characters, and that comes back into it. So it, re, it reinvigorates the sense of how moving play is. I hope they will find it as moving as the best seagull could ever be, because a good seagull has got to really upset you. That's my favourite play. Of Chekhov. Partly it's a player of the theatre, partly it's a player of had a sort of relationship with working on before. I suppose when any writer is approaching a sort of a translation, because you're never going to get what Chekhov wrote unless you're hearing it, first of all, in the original Russian, um, which is possible if you're a Russian speaker. Um, but secondly, you would only get the original version of Chekhov wrote if you're watching it in 1896. Um, and that's never going to happen again. So you're never going to get the exact seagull that Chekhov wrote. So when you're approaching it, you need some kind of root into it. So I suppose the humour was a little bit of a useful thing for me. It's a play which is it's famously described as a comedy by Chekhov. And it's, it's often presented as a kind of a, a big surprise, that oh, we, we should find a comedy in it, but the comedy's kind of there. So you can get productions which sort of pitch it, try and pitch it too much as a kind of laugh fest, and they don't work. Because it's, it's a kind of... Comedy in the sense it's really absurd. I hope they will also find it rougher, more absurd, more exciting. I'm most excited about Blanche McIntyre's production, um, partly because I've written it very much in mind knowing that Blanche is going to direct it. Um, and so I've, I've written it with a sense of her doing something very exciting with the play. So I've talked to her a lot when I've been developing it, and I've tried to create a version of the play that lends itself um, to her doing something with it. Um, and in the same way as hearing it in a reading that the actors take it and make it sort of something other than what I've put into it, in a way that I've taken it and made it something that I really hope is true to the spirit of Chekhov and the spirit of the ego. Um, but nonetheless, is something new, I hope. So I think that's the main duty you have with any kind of new version of a play, to make it feel like a new play. I'm hoping Brock Larch's production will do that. I hope that they will see they will see the characters as people that they might know and uh, read them in that way as opposed to seeing them as people in corsets behaving in ways that you would have to experience time travel to understand.